Eric, um, as I said, welcome to the show. Um, I know it's been busy times for you. You just uh, became father a few days ago. So uh, was it a baby boy or baby girl? It's uh, 10 days ago or no, 11 days ago. And it is an, uh, another baby boy, uh, the second one. So, uh, second and I love one. the way, I love the way, as he said that, he starts rubbing his eyes. Like clearly <laughs> sleeping is not um, <laughs> something that's happening. <laughs> it's optional. It's optional. So, it's optional. <laughs> so uh, before we're going to talk uh, to you about, uh, and you're going to present uh, the nice move And I, again, I thank you very much for a very nice uh, day with you in Barcelona just before Christmas. Uh, it was wonderful to get some sun. It was wonderful to be sitting outside uh, having a lunch. And uh, I, I must admit that uh, that I've been quite fascinated about uh, the Movent uh, machines. And uh, I take that you are still early days, but uh, how is how are things developing for you guys? Um, so, so yeah, the pleasure was all mine. It was a good uh, reason to no, go no, to fine. the beach. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like you said, uh, lovely days in Barcelona. Today is a little bit less, but uh, yeah, no, no, it's going well. So um, as everybody knows, it's it, it's not easy to introduce a new uh, digital machine to the market. Uh, so it, it takes always some time. You always have some, uh, you know, uh, delays and the COVID was not helping. Uh, but I can say now, uh, I think uh, the, the big turnaround came uh, just when you were in Barcelona around October, November time frame. Uh, when we opened the demo center in Barcelona, uh, we are installing the machines, finally uh, capable of shipping the machines as well to the customers and having the success at customers. So, uh, mm, so yeah, that's good. So it's a little bit later than expected. Uh, mm. I think we delayed roughly six additional months uh because of COVID, uh, but again, I, I, I think we're in a good place. Uh, we're happy we are here, and uh, we start seeing a lot of happy customers, which we see, uh, of course, later in a video. Mm. Yeah, because I was Great. just about to say that we have a, a customer video from a German customer, actually a, a small uh, printing company called My Labels, um, uh, which uh, invested in the first digital device, and they invested actually in your machine, right? Uh, so it must be quite exciting to see that that uh, a machine like the Movent can can actually address both uh, small, uh, smaller and larger. Uh, customers because it has this uh, unique uh, position in the market, right? Um, but we talk about that in in a second. Um, uh, one one question before we we get into the to the uh, presentation: um, Have you seen some of the other presentations we did to have done here? Me uh, myself. Yeah. Hmm? Yes. Yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. Because I was just I was, the reason why I was asking is not because I want you to to say anything about it. I was just wondering because we have tried to have that you know that entire journey from both the brand owner and the publisher side to to the the vendor side and to the finishing side on Friday. And I was just uh, uh, I was just uh, curious because I mean one of the things that when you invent a machine like uh, the Movent machines and the time it's take to get to market. I think that uh, one of the advantages you have is also being part of the box group because, I mean, first of all, you have a huge uh, installed base of, uh, of, of analog equipment, and now you can tailor uh, the movement into that uh, into that customer journey. Is that is that a correct assumption? <laughs> yeah, my, my my box colleagues always say uh, it's happy to finally be able to say yes uh, when they ask about <laughs> digital. Uh, well, that's great. <laughs> So, so no, but that's the reality, you know, in, in, in the past. And, uh, you know, I have a whole history in digital printing, of course. And uh, if you were a Bob's customer, there was one option, and that was go to the competition and uh, get a competitor machine. And now you see that a lot of Bob's customers, they, uh, they trust Bob's, they're happy with Bob's for many, many, many years. And now they finally can also uh, address that uh, digital wish that they have uh, within the Bob's group. And that's fantastic. And that's also very motivating for uh, the Bob's group in, in general huh? you can imagine that if you were selling uh, only conventional uh, presses that you, yeah you were not always as happy as you could be because if a customer decided to go one direction uh, mm -hmm. yeah you had a problem so uh, there it's also it's motivating the people within Bob's and I think uh, it's really embracing and that's also what we saw and that's also what you wrote in the article that uh, Movent is now more and more part of the Bob's group uh, integrated 100% uh, acquired by Bob's and that's a uh, very good and clear message to the market. Well, that's fair because you've also got a whole database to go and upgrade. So, I mean, that's exciting. 
Yes, there's plenty of it to do. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, we had the customers, we didn't have the machine. So, you know, now we have also the machine. So, uh, you know, it should, right. it should uh, sound like in a dream story, but uh, <laughs> it's still hard work, uh, fascinating work and, and fun. So that's okay. awesome. So um, what we here will do now is uh, Jean and I will turn off uh, our cameras. Uh, will you present from share screen or will you just, just use the slides here? Uh, I will use the slides here. So uh, I saw that you uploaded it. Uh, yeah. Just click slides here. and yeah. click on. The, and then I will turn off camera and sound, but we will be there. So if you need us, uh, you just oh. let us know. Okay. I, and then I, I saw the uh, panic button. Okay. You can see the slide now, no? You can see it now because I click okay, the start great. button. Okay. Take it away, Eric. Okay, um, so uh, like Morten said, uh, everybody, uh, thank you and uh, welcome for joining uh, in this session uh, about uh, Movent uh, and Bobst. Um, I, I quickly want to do an introduction on who is Bobst. Uh, I, I know a lot of you are from the label industry. Uh, Bobst, of course, is big in uh, flexible packaging and other uh, sections, but also in, uh, of course, in the labels. Um, uh, Bob's is based in May, and from base uh, in May, uh, we have our head offices. So you see here in, uh, a picture of the, the Bob's the people, the Bob's site. Uh, we are a 130 year old company, and uh, for the Movent site, we are new in digital printing since 2017, with uh, the products launched in 2019. So, on one end, we are a very new company, on the other end, we are a very experienced company with a lot of uh, network uh, in, uh, in the world. Um, we say that we are leading an innovation, and uh, I truly think that we are. Uh, we are really uh, have a big uh, database of customers. And like Morten already said before, we're talking to brands. We are uh, connecting with customers of our customers, and uh, that's why we try always to lead innovation. Now, if you go, uh, so uh, yeah. Oh. Wait, sorry for that. So here you see also that what our mission is, is actually to be one supplier, one partner from printing to finishing. And you see here actually the big pillar of uh, the Bob's group. So we have our products, we have converting, we have coating and lamination, we have printing, and then we have uh, printing and converting in line. So there's a lot of different technologies that we as uh, Bob's uh, supply to our partners and uh, to our suppliers. And it is definitely from printing uh, to finishing and much beyond that. And I will talk about that, uh, of course, uh, later. Now, um, what you see here, and, and this is a an, uh, uh, an message from the POPS groups itself, where we definitely uh, go into it so that we have the strategic objective. We really want to become the number one and number two in each technology that we start in. So uh, we think that we believe as a family-owned uh, company still uh, to deliver the values as a family-owned company to the biggest companies in the world. So we want to work together with the, the small companies like you will see later in the My Label video, but also to the bigger companies, uh, the, the multinationals in the industry, and also talking to the, the big brands. So the main priorities, of course, is quality and service, optimized organizations, and the customer focus, and of course, the value creation at Bobst. So you see that here on the slide, and um, we will talk to this later. Now, talking about Bobst and about our uh, strong future pool, uh, partner proof uh, network, you see that here we are present in more than 50 countries. We have more than 14 production facilities and we have more than over 5,600 people worldwide. Now, why do I say that? Because this is a, actually a, the movement presentation. And being part of the Bobst group, it gives us a lot of advantages. Of course, the technology is new, the inkjet is new, but again, we have service organizations all around the world that we will use uh, shipping of parts, uh, spare parts centers, uh, the right engineers and the right people. And at the end of the day, it's about, about the people uh, that matter. And, and we see that as Bob's as well. So we try to be very close to our customers uh, to be able to deliver the service and uh, the partnership uh, that our customers expect from us. Now, what is also very important is the, the lately announced Bob's vision. And 
again, for a 130 year old company, it's, it's of course, uh, critical that you keep evolving and evolving and, and, and the production 4.0 is there a big example from. So you see the industry vision here. And of course, uh, we have the, the converters, we have the end consumer and everything that's in between there. So from brand owner, designer, pre-press, we are trying to address each, uh, part of the supply chain. And by doing that, we, we, we are sure that we can, offer our customers uh, the perfect solution uh, for their needs. And of course, this is built on quality, efficiency, control, sustainability, and pro uh, proximity, like you see here, and you see all the products uh, that we as Bobst offer. Now, that, that's about Bobst. So I wanted to give you in this introduction because um, this will not be a presentation just about uh, Movent. It will not be just about uh, products. It will be more about the vision that we have as uh, Movent within the Bobst group uh, for the future. Now, strategic for there is, of course, um, the Bob's One Label Portfolio. What do we mean with the Bob's One Label Portfolio is that we have one label portfolio for all labels. So it doesn't matter of the customer needs. It, it's really addressing those customer needs. And we call it the Big Seven. So the Big Seven, it's about material, it's about shape, it's about color, uh, quality, cost, sustainability, time to market, and personalization. Those seven key elements, I think, is driving every customer at this moment. So if you look at the market, it doesn't matter in which business, these are really the key uh, factors that are driving uh, our customers. And we try to address each of them. And of course, it's difficult to have one product for each, uh, uh, to address each, you know, it's very complicated to, for example, address cost with, with a an, an digital press that runs 30 meters per minute. Yeah? But if you combine this, for example, with an all-in-one technology or hybrid radicals, it, it will change the story. And there, I want to give you a take you in, in the journey in the next 25 minutes. Now, one label portfolio here, um, you can see it. Uh, what do we mean it? Now, if you look at the left, you see a narrow web flexo machine. So narrow web flexo, um, I think most of you are familiar with it. It's, it's, it's a big chunk of the market, you know, still more labels are printed in uh, flexo than in digital or than in other, any other technology in uh, the label business. Now there, um, we, we really see that the, the, the people that uh, buy flexo presses, they really have a strong focus. Eh? Normally it's based on long runs, it's based on embellishment, and it's on direct pantone colors. So here again, you can talk about quality, you can talk about uh, digital versus uh, analog, but I think uh, the narrow web flexo machines have a clear advantage in some of these areas. Yeah? Still in digital printing, you're simulating pantone colors while you have the advantage in flexo to really print any direct pantone that you want and also cost effective, yeah? because if you want to do it in digital, it might not always be cost effective. Now then on the right side, you have of course the digital presses. And for the digital presses, um, it's of course print on demand, short run, long run, it's different SQUs, uh, different VDPs, you know the story. Um, I think digital printing in, in labels, the business itself is the most mature. So we see really that we have uh, a lot of digital presses around the world. There's a lot of different vendors uh, where you can choose from nowadays. And um, they're focusing on this, you know, uh, very easy operations, uh, um, uh, short time to market and, and so on. And then you have the uh, all-in-one solution, the way we call it. And why do we call it all-in-one? Um, I, I, th I think hybrid is not covering uh, what it says. Of course, it's it's a hybrid technology of two different technologies, but many things are at the end of the day. I think all-in-one is is really saying what it is. You know, it's you can do with one machine, you can do everything, and and everything is really based on what is the need of the customer. Basically, it can run medium to long run. It could do ultra short runs as well. But again, there uh, you need to decide if you want to go for food digital or if you want to go for the all in one. Then, of course, you can do this personalization. You can do the SKUs. Um, and then it's about delivering an end to end solution. Here, you will be the most effective if you have the right jobs for this machine. Being simple, one operator uh, doing the whole job by himself on, on one machine. Now, I will not, uh, in this presentation, go into the details of the machine. So uh, we have three demo centers all over the world, one in the US, in Atlanta, Barcelona, and May, uh, so uh, May in Switzerland. Um, if you want to know more, you can write me an email. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can read on, online. We can book a demo. We can do a live demo, face-to-face, -face, uh, you name it. But this is not about the technology, uh, this presentation. 
Now, the Bob's label portfolio, it's, it's about complementary, conventional, and different technologies. And this is how we see it. So in the most uh, uh, companies, if you have a look right now, you would see a FlexoPress uh, uh, next to a uh, digital toner machine. So that is what it is right now. So in, until two, three years ago, Inkjet was coming up. Inkjet still had a lot of issues to solve and toner was really the way to go. So if you go now to any customer around the world, and I think many of you are here at this call, you will have Flexo technology and you have digital toner technology. And still, uh, we see that, you know, there is a still in gap, you know, when, when is, uh, the end of digital toner, what is your break-even point there? Maybe a thousand linear meters, and then you have to go already at Flexo. Now, there is where inkjet technology comes in with a completely different speed because of the end of the day, you know, if you spend two hours printing on a job of 1500 linear meters, it, it will be cheaper at a certain point on Flexo. So there, inkjet plays a big role. Now, and I think with the all-in-one machine there as well, where you can do the finishing in line, it, it will has a big benefit. And I think nowadays with the, the, the volumes increasing in digital printing, a lot of customers have this volume where they maybe change once or twice the substrate a day or per shift, and they see, hey, inline finishing makes sense. And we see already some uh, digital toner machines running with inline finishing. And then, of course, at 30 meters per minute, uh, it is not ideal. So if you combine this with the speeds of, uh, of uh, inkjet, then it uh, suddenly makes sense. So it's really the right equipment for the right job. And um, where you had in the past the choice from uh, two machines, I think now we have a solid choice of four different uh, equipments and four uh, different kind of machine that could do any job. So it's also about cost optimization. Um, and what happens if a customer uh, orders a thousand linear meters today? If, of course, it's easy. You print it on your digital press, be it inkjet, be it toner. What happens if he next week orders the same job of six, seven thousand linear meters? You know, digital toner will not be an option anymore. So you have to do it somewhere else. And uh, that also, I think the all-in-one uh, is a good answer uh, for this as well. Uh, cost optimization, of course, uh, the end of the day, the ink prices are what they, what they are. Um, if you look at the running cost of uh, any machine, so the ink prices is, of course, important. But if you spend three hours printing on a job or you spend 45 minutes uh, on a job, it's a completely different world. There is your cost. There is your hourly rate. And we all know in the hourly rate, you have your overhead. There's where you make money. And also in a later stage, you come to there is the output per day, how many jobs can you print per day? How fast can you deliver them to your customers? And of course, increase of product offering. You know, what kind of products do you offer to your customer? So each technology still has uh, his positive sides. So I'm not here to tell you that there is one technology that, that can do it all because it's not there. If you have an outdoor label uh, that needs high uh, scratch resistance or proof against uh, water, you know, uh, you know, already with tonal technology, you get to your limits. Uh, you know, if you print on wine, limit, uh, wine material, uh, UV toner is not the right solution. Uh, for that, you know, you go to Flexo. So still there, uh, you see that uh, you have really to talk about the right equipment for the right job. And also this is about uh, production flow uh, diversification and also optimization. Now here in the next slide, I give you an overview and, and um, I, I I ask you, don't go too much in, uh, into the numbers because all these numbers, of course, are a little bit hypothetical. You know, they are. Uh, you can say, okay, what is that top time? So you see a move end, you see electrophotography at 30 meters per minute, and you see flexo. Now, I say the gray part is the setup time, and the red is the printing time. Now, what I want to show here is if you have a job of 500 or 1,000 linear meters and you have a seven and a half hour shift, this is normally what uh, customers do with a flexo press or with their uh, electrophotography. Now, you see there in, in flexo, you're setting up more than you're printing, and yeah? that's not an ideal solution. Now, if you go to the digital machines, here you see that you have much more uh, output uh, per day on, on your printing press. So here, there is, you talk about margin. You have 14 jobs or 22 jobs even where you have a margin. And that's actually the current digital offerings is shorter run and a high quantity of job. Now, we as Movent, we want to change this value proposition. We want to take this to 3,000 and 5,000 millimeters and beyond. Because if you look at 3,000 millimeters, there you see that Flexo will do five jobs, even already more than a digital press at 30 meters per minute. But now, if you look at the Movent, you see that you can still do, uh, you can do nine uh, jobs. So that's more than double and also with a higher uh, margin, you know, because you use less time to print it, the less time to set up. 
And again, you see here a 10 minute setup time that could be one minute, could be two minutes, could be 10 minutes. It is equal. You have to look at per uh, situation. Now at 5,000, you see already uh, that, uh, you know, Flexo is, is really getting into their comfort zone where they start printing uh, and setting up at the same time. Um, on a move end, you would still output two more jobs uh, in this case. But again, you see here already what's happening. And in electrophotography, uh, in, in toner at 30 meters per minute, you see there really there's the issue because the, the, the current offering based on high quantity of jobs is completely gone here. You cannot just print two jobs uh, digitally and then still uh, supply jobs to your customer next day because if you're fully booked with printing those two or three jobs a day, uh, what happens if a customer asks you for a small job of five, 600 millimeters? Uh, you will have to change your whole organization. You have to change your whole uh, production flow and maybe move a job to the next day so there uh, you see in my view really the uh, the benefits of uh, faster machines now production optimization you see it here as well the right tool for the right job um, here also you see that uh, flexo all uh, that's the bottom one you see that you have a 70 percent uptime i think this was that this was easily until 2010 where people were trying to do everything on the flexo press they had a flexo press they were doing short jobs ultra short jobs there were some medium jobs um, and, and 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 that was not the right tool for the right job adding a digital press and removing all those small jobs give them something something to breathe and here, uh, this is also what I show you here. If you would take these jobs all on the move end, you would still be faster than uh, two flexo presses. Again, that's 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 not what we are here for. What I try to say is here: if you focus on flexo uh, and do flexo all, uh, if flexo focus, you will have now an uptime of seventy percent. You know, and then you're suddenly also making money again on the flexo jobs. And if you do flexo all, your uptime goes down by twenty two percent because you try to do everything on on the same machine. And, and that's what uh, we try to do with our customers as well. So when we sit to together, we, we really ask the customer, what is your challenge? What is the, uh, the thing you're looking for? What is your daily challenges that you have? And how can we help you? Um, now here we see a uh, uh, different technology fit customer needs. So here we put down uh, more or less how we think uh, that the run length distribution is. So you see the volume uh, on top, uh, you see an entry level machine that is the LB701 UV. Um, it's a machine that prints 80 meters per minute. Then you have the 702 that brings it to another level. Then you have the DM5 and then you have the master press, the, uh, the conventional press. So here, uh, this is the offering that we have for MoveAnt. So if you see that, for example, short runs lengths of 50 meters, 60 meters, 80 meters, or all the way up to 1,000, 2,000 meters, I think the 701 is the perfect machine for you. Now, if you want to take it uh, to an another level, three, four, 5,000 millimeters, the 702 is there, the perfect machine. But also the Master DM5. Uh, the Master DM5 is a 702, but then built into a flexor press. And uh, it can do jobs of two meters or 50 meters, but preferably you would not like to change the, the role. You know, you would like to finish this 4,000 millimeters hole. And um, we have a video uh, on this as well. Uh, if you want to see it on the Bob's website, uh, it's a video. It finishes a 4,000 linear meters roll, including finishing after setup in 42 minutes. So 42 minutes later, uh, after installing the, the roll, you have 4,000 linear meters of finished products, uh, die cut it, varnished, uh, slitted uh, at the end of the, this uh, machine. It's really incredible. And then, of course, you have the best in class narrow web flex press, the, the master M5. And this is what we mean with the one uh, label portfolio. You, you can now uh, easily start at an, a small machine at a small investment for the 701. We talk around 280,000 euros for a four color machine and you can grow uh, with the same technology. You don't need to swap technology. So right now, if you want to start in digital printing, um, most of your option is uh, um, an, um, and a toner machine that runs 20, 25 meters per minute. Now with our machine at 70, 80 meters per minute, you run already much faster. But then if you have more volume, you cannot add presses. Adding presses is just increasing your cost. You need more operators, you have more service costs, you have more service contract, you need more floor space. So if you can combine that in one machine and if you can trade this up, that's the ideal situation. And that's what we try to, uh, to show you here is that when you start with a 701, you can trade up to a 702, even to a master DM5, and, and if you then see, okay, there is a lot of work and I also want to invest in, in, in Flexo, you're already familiar to the technology uh, from our DM5 for the Master M5 and so on. 
Now here, um, and, and this is one of the uh, most important slides that I want to uh, share with you. Um, this is about the uh, master DM5. And uh, you still all call it hybrid. I hope after today you will all call it uh, all-in-one, but I think that's a little bit of a dream from us. But I can, um, when, you, when you look at hybrid and, and me included, before I joined, uh, uh, Bob's move and I was always saying it's, it's the worst uh, of both worlds, where they would say it's the best of both worlds. So you had a digital uh, module that was quite slow, maybe 20 meters, maybe 40 meters. And then you had this uh, flexor press that could run uh, as fast as 200 meters even. But then you had this long setup times. And combining those two, that was really important. Now, at Movent, when we are running at uh, our machine is running 80 meters up to 100 meters. So 80 meters, we are very comfortable uh, in running almost any job. And depending on the job layout, you will go up to 100 meters. Now, combining this with a flexo equipment is, of course, an, an ideal situation. And then suddenly you're combining the things of the of uh, the boat industries. Also, having it from one supplier is very critical. Uh, uh, you don't have to go to one supplier for the digital part and then for the uh, conventional part to the other supplier working with two uh, service contracts and so on. So we are delivering one machine in one. Now, what is also what we kind of change, and that's also what I want to do, is the perception. If you look at the left top one, you see it's a simple label finishing. So any of you that has now currently an, an, a toner machine with an inline finishing, this is in principle what you want. This is uh, the DM5. It has maybe one flexor before. You could add uh, white, you could add uh, a primer, uh, you could, uh, you know, you have a station uh, for something before you print. Then you have the UV and then you have an, a station after. So you can do a matte varnish, you can do blood varnish, you can know it wherever you want. Then you have the automatic plate load and then you have the rewinding. So this is a solution that is uh, really incredible. It's basically, a digital machine with inline finishing, but then with one operator, one supplier, everything combined in one. So this is our um, really, in, if, if you ask me, for people that have uh, one or two uh, digital presses right now, this is the thing that they really need to consider for their future, because uh, just adding a digital press to your capacity and adding a digital finishing equipment needs you make more people, more shifts, uh, more service contracts. For me, uh, that, that's going definitely going into the right direction. I think this is really the the, the right way to do. Now, then you see also. Uh, on the bottom left, you see the multiprocessor and imbalance job. Now here you go into what you see a lot on, on label expos and Drupas. You see this big uh, hybrid machines, uh, all on ones that, that can do everything, but are they good in one thing? Uh, so my question is always, if you're gonna do an, on average, four color label, uh, maybe sometimes you're using five or six colors. Are you going to be uh, profitable with a machine that has five flexor stations, had cold foiling, had all the uh, bells and whistles, and you're never using it, but your hourly rate uh, goes through the roof because this machine costs 1.6, 1.7 million uh, euros? You know, I don't think so. So it's really depending on your needs. So here, um, this is what we try to do on this slide. So here we, we make the four uh, versions that we think that the customers would uh, talk to uh, us about. It. Now here you see multi-process and balanced job. So here you're talking about a job that maybe has some cold foil, maybe it has an additional station for white or for matte varnish and gloss varnish, and things that you change uh, quite a lot. The top right, you see a label with large part color or white. Again, uh, at the longer runs, uh, and, and, and this uh, all-in-one machine, I, we see our customers already currently running jobs up to 20,000 linear meters. I could imagine that if yes, there's a large spot color or there is a lot of white, that you would make a plate and you would print this in conventional to reduce the cost on the white ink, to reduce the cost on the high coverage uh, of inkjet. Of course, uh, when a move in there, also we have solutions. We have uh, a linear meter price where all the ink is included. So there's many options to go around it, but we still see that customers would want to have the need to print the spot color uh, together with digital. And now you can. So if a customer will not accept a an, an color built up in orange, violet, and green uh, and simulate it, and he really wants the pant on, here, uh, this is your chance to do it on an additional flex. Now on the on the bottom, I think here you go to an, an, an flexo uh, machine with digital technology, the all-in-one, specifically for a need from a customer. Uh, 
uh, where, where you can say to the customer, um, okay, I have this specific job, I have a huge tender, I have this brand owner that wants a specific thing, and I want to design my machine according to it. And that is what you see. And then also here in the middle, you see clearly um, what are all the options that you have. And, and the great thing of, of this master DM5 is also you can upgrade it at the moment you want. So you can configure it now as, you know, the digital press with inline finishing. But if you see down the road that you need additional flexo stations, uh, you can add them. Uh, a foiling station can be used anywhere it is. So you can see the small black part, that's the only digital part. So you're very flexible in what you want where. If you want foil before printing, it's possible. If you want foil after printing, it's possible without uh, major uh, changes in design and it could be configurable uh, right from the beginning. Um, so this is one of my last slides and I think uh, this is a little bit technology far. So this is things, uh, doing things that are not possible for. So I think here we see a an, an clear uh, trend that I've seen also in my life. I'm in this industry since 1992, so quite lo uh, long already. I started at a young age and, and we saw really that Gravier and Offset were the, the, the first uh, drivers. Then Flexo came in, uh, then you saw the donor uh, revolution and now I think it's really the time for the inkjet. Uh, you know, the, the the, the main driver for this is, is, is less moving parts. It's much easier to operate. You don't need weeks of training. Uh, it, it is really that much easier. It's, it's high quality at the moment. You see we everybody in uh, Inkjet is at 1200, 1200 dB, and the costs are coming down. Uh, together with much higher speeds, I think uh, the offering of uh, Inkjet is something of today and uh, definitely of the, of the future. Now, I think I talked a little bit faster than planned. So uh, this is already my last slide. Um, so for me, uh, first of all, thank you. You see my email address. If you have any inquiries, uh, if you want to send me a message uh, or whatever, you can always do it there. Um, yeah, so uh, Morten, I think I'm, I'm fast today. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we still have a video as well. We have questions and we have video. So. Uh, before we uh, we turn on the questions, shouldn't we just see the video? Maybe before, do you know? Do you know anything about the customer? Or should I give a little brief on who that is? <laughs> uh, yes, you can do. Yes, you were okay. there. So uh... I was I was not there physically because uh, no, uh, most people cannot travel these days, right? So um, uh, this is a um, is a German company that is uh, called mylabels.de. Uh, Ralf Bittighöfer uh, Hofer is uh, the the owner and the CEO of the company, and they have a a three and a half million euro turnover company. So just so you that put that in perspective and about half of the business is uh, selling, uh, you know, these office uh, warehouse uh, uh, blank label uh, printed devices for, for name tags and, you know, all these things. Uh, so that's half of the business. And the other half of the business is, uh, uh, is uh, producing labels and they come from a, uh, I think it was a 12 person company from a analog world. Um, and now they have, uh, uh, I think they they met you the first time at Label Expo, and then they went to May, uh, and uh, now they are a very happy customer with uh, uh, with uh, the move end. Uh, I think it's the seven hundred one, or is it the seven hundred two? I can't remember. Um, seven hundred two. Two. <laughs> that was the sign language, so that means it's a it's a it's a very nice machine. One of the things, Eric, uh, I just want to 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 push a little bit towards something because you said that you didn't want to talk too much about the machines, but I think that. I would actually um, no. Let's do let's do that later. Let's see the film. And for the yes. non-German people, rest assured, we have made English subtitles to it. So, and it's a four and a half minutes film. So stay on, and then we get some uh, some questions afterwards. So uh, turn off your camera and, and sound, uh, Eric, and see you in a second. Also erstmal herzlich willkommen hier in der Pfalz, genauer gesagt in Offenbach bei Landau. Herzlich willkommen bei MyLabels. Wir sind ein kleines Unternehmen von zwölf Mitarbeitern. Uns gibt es äh, dieses Jahr schon 20 Jahre. Also wir beschäftigen uns nicht nur mit Etiketten, sondern ganz allgemein mit dem Thema der Produktkennzeichnung und äh, Identifikation. Wir haben eine Handelsvertretung für die Firma CAB. Das ist sind die ganzen Geräte, die Sie hier hinter mir sehen. 
Das ist ein Hersteller von Etikettendruckern und Etikettiersystemen. Das ist auch europaweit der größte, sitzt ganz in der Nähe von uns hier in Karlsruhe, ist der Hauptsitz. Wir machen ungefähr so dreieinhalb Millionen Euro Umsatz, davon die Hälfte mit Etiketten. Und der andere Teil ist eben wie erwähnt, die Drucker, die Etikettierer, der Service, die Wartung. Das ist das, was wir tun. Wenn man zurückschaut, wie das vor 20 Jahren hier war mit dem Etikettendruck und es heute sieht mit dem Digitaldruck, dann ist das schon sehr, sehr schön zu sehen und fantastisch auch, was man für Möglichkeiten mit dem Digitaldruck hat. Wir haben die ganze Zeit, unseren Fokus liegt eigentlich auf den Blanco-Etiketten gelegen und mit der neuen Movement-Maschine sind wir in den Digitaldruck eingestiegen und ähm, haben nun auch die Möglichkeit, eben kleine, mittlere Auflagen kostengünstig anbieten zu können. Als wir uns ähm, auf die Suche gemacht haben, um, um genauer nach den ähm, Maschinen zu schauen, die für uns passend sind, wurden wir schnell auf Movement aufmerksam. Und so kamen wir nach Brüssel und haben die Maschine zum ersten Mal live gesehen und waren äh, begeistert, wie schnell sie arbeiten kann mit diesen 100 Metern. Das ist schon verdammt, verdammt schnell. Dann folgten weitere Gespräche. Ähm, und gerade im Hinblick auch auf Druckkosten, der Tintenpreis bei Movement ist sehr günstig, war es klar, dass es in diese Richtung weitergehen muss. Wir haben dann ähm, die Schweiz besucht äh, und uns am Produktionsstandort von Movement die Maschine genauer angeschaut. Ich weiß es noch genau, wir hatten 21 Materialien im Auto, die wir mit hingenommen haben und haben da ja, anderthalb Tage von morgens bis abends getestet und äh, das hat uns eben auch alles sehr zuversichtlich gestimmt, dass diese Maschine hier die richtige für unsere Anwendung ist, weil geringe Breiten, unterschiedlichste Materialien von PE, PP, PET, PVC, Karton bis hin zu Textil hat alles auf Anhieb funktioniert und so waren wir sicher, dass wir in den Invest gehen können und die Maschine kaufen. Also der Start in den Digitaldruck war schon etwas holprig, wobei wir aber immer die ja, starke Rückendeckung durch Movement und die Techniker dort vor Ort hatten. Das muss ich wirklich auch besonders erwähnen. Die ganzen Leute bei Movement sind sehr engagiert und sehr motiviert. Man hat auch Fragen stellen können, was drumherum war in der Druckvorstufe und so weiter. Haben wir doch einige Etiketten jetzt auch von Flexodruck auf die Movement-Maschine umstellen können, weil sich erstaunlicherweise auch bei größeren Stückzahlen schon oder mittleren Stückzahlen sehr gut darstellt von der Kostenseite her. Also man kann es wirklich transferieren und günstiger für den Kunden und schneller für den Kunden produzieren. Und wir konnten natürlich auch neue Kundenkreise gewinnen für uns. Dafür wurde auch jemand eingestellt im Vertrieb, der sich um diesen neuen Kundenkreis hier kümmert. Wir denken auch, dass wir für Wiederverkäufer interessant sein können, weil es eben ja aufgrund der Größe die Kalkulation eine sehr schlanke ist. Und wir können es auch für Wiederverkäufer einen interessanten, wettbewerbsfähigen Preis anbieten. Ich denke, wir sind jetzt eben mit dieser Movement-Maschine sehr gut für die Zukunft aufgestellt. Durch die vorhandenen Konvertierungsmaschinen, die wir haben von ABG und äh, jetzt kommt noch Ende Februar eine weitere Maschine von Protect dazu mit Flexodruckwerk und ähm, jede Menge Spezialanbauten, die wir benötigen für Sonderetiketten zu fertigen. Ähm, aber gerade im Hinblick auf den Digitaldruck ist es einfach sehr wichtig, gewesen für uns, uns jetzt zu positionieren am Markt und ähm, eben auch diese kleinen, mittleren Auflagen anbieten zu können. Und ähm, da Bobs diese Maschine auch ständig weiterentwickelt, auch der Fortschritt der Maschine jetzt in den letzten Monaten zu sehen, das ist schon äh, sehr schön. Ähm, das zeigt eben deutlich, dass man dieses Thema auch bei Bobs sehr, sehr ernst nimmt. Ich bin mir auch sicher, dass sich die Druckkosten in diesem Bereich weiter nach unten bewegen werden, sodass die, die Attraktivität gerade des uv inkjet druck immer, immer mehr äh, zunehmen wird, weil eben ja, der ROI doch deutlich früher erreicht wird, wenn man in den Invest dieser Maschine setzt. Die, man sieht es ja auch immer wieder, die Druckkosten im, im Flexodruck ist eine Sache, aber Sie haben ja auch heute einen Kunden, der schnell etwas möchte, der eine hohe Sortenvielfalt hat und das können Sie eben nur darüber überhaupt abbilden.
Isn't it amazing what you can do uh, into your via phone and then a camera guy on floor, right? <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Um, and that is even with my bad German, so <laughs> fantastic. But uh, this is, I think it's actually a, a wonderful that you chose to showcase a customer like this because uh, it's not a everyday's, um, um, everyday's type of customer, I think, uh, to, to, to what I think anyway. And I think it's a great story. Um, let me... Can yes. I ask quickly, Eric? Yes. So sure, that was sure, great. Sure. It was great. I just want to, what about substrates? Because what are the limitations? What are the challenges? Um, limitations, challenges. Uh, yeah, There's always uh, tricky questions, of course. So I, I, I think uh, one of the advantages of the Movent is the, uh, the way we have our cluster and our own uh, ink chemistry. So I think we can address a wide range of substrates without uh, even using a primer. Um, ha having that said, uh, sometimes one supplier offers a uh, better suitable product than for ours. You will not uh, need uh, uh, optimized materials. But for example, if you go to the website of our partners, uh, UPM, Raflatak, and Avery Dennison, Fasson, you will see a uh, whole list of approved materials. So uh, any uh, strange material, we always test it. I would say in general, uh, wine label structurized uh, materials, that, that's the tough challenge uh, nowadays for inkjet. You know, uh, the PEs, the PVCs, the pads, they, they are easy. Uh, you know, that's our comfort zone. Uh, you know, uh, ink uh, resistance on these materials is, is great for uh, the industri industrial labels. Um, wine, there is really where uh, you need to go to with other, other technologies. And other technologies, I mean, that's that's water-based uh, uh, inkjet area. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. where we uh, will go in uh, in, uh, in the short term and to go into that direction. But yeah, that, that would be my uh, my answer on your question. But I guess it's with every every inkjet device. So it's growing, and as volumes get bigger, so more people are going to be manufacturing more substrates, and you're going to have more choices. So I think it's, yeah. it's like inkjet overall. Yeah, yeah, and I think also uh, that's one part. Eh? And you see, uh, uh, the, the substrate suppliers are happy to work with inkjet because you talk about much more uh, volume. Uh, if you look at the PIOR report, I think uh, the pages printed on inkjet is roughly 30, 40 percent higher than on a toner machine. So it is very interesting for them. On top of that, uh, also the chemistry side. You know, we're learning every day. Uh, we're Thanks. working with customers, and that's why also a customer like my label is interesting. So you know, we have our machines installed at the big. Uh, corporates at big printing houses where you have a specific jobs uh, in a small uh, company uh, like my labels everything passes by so to have one of your first machines there it's uh, like also uh, mr bittinghofer said uh, it's a big learning curve uh, it was not always easy because he had so many different materials so many different customers and every day something came new what you don't expect uh, and and that makes it interesting and that and that makes you as a company uh, learn a lot and if you can do that journey together with a company like my levels uh, it's it's amazing. brilliant mm. uh we got a few questions uh we got a question from uh, amos bergbest uh, he he's asking in relation to your presentation he said that you mentioned receiving a short job um um you mentioned receiving a short job and later the same day, same job, only seven to 10,000 uh, meters. Uh, will the printed Flexo product look like the inkjet? I think that is a, a good question. <laughs> I, I mean, how do you match? Uh, I mean, it, because you said that if you move these uh, uh, from these technology, technology things, I'm just wondering, uh, is there like, uh, how is the visuals, the, the difference in visuals? Yeah. It, it, there's always a good question and that's also you know why why you need specialized people and you need a good uh, DAV solution uh, which can handle this job and and of course uh, offering both uh, technologies we really know a lot about Flexo and we really know a lot about digital so combining this uh, it will help our customers now what we also learned in the whole journey of digital printing is that there are not so many standards in Flexo eh? so in Flexo print is <laughs> so that, so really that could standard. be the diverse uh, quality uh, so, in itself no no <laughs> No, no, I, I think if you talk to nowadays customers, they say, you know, it's if you have a four color image, 
brand new from the customer. It's easy to print in digital. You know how it's coming out. In Flexo, it's depending on your operator, the day, uh, the, the day of the week, uh, your inks, uh, your analogs. It's so many differentiations. So you see there also that Flexo is doing a lot. And one of these example is uh, one ECG that is Pops doing is actually trying to standardize uh, Flexo. So um, what it really for me is you have always legacy. You always have jobs that a reflex blue is a little bit darker or lighter than it should be. Now, this kind of things you need to address in digital by really measuring uh, uh, the colors, the sample itself uh, with the IO1. Uh, this is completely color management, and uh, which we completely support. We uh, we have ASCO integrated. Uh, we work with this so yes absolutely i i will not say that you know in all the cases it's, it's done in two minutes you know uh, we have uh, sometimes <laughs> that we spend 20 minutes sometimes we spend one minute you know uh, but that's on any digital device the same so there is no yeah, difference yeah. there i would say in move end versus uh, any of our uh, friends from the competition I and eric what about sorry uh, carry on uh, morton no, just a short one because in, in relation to the call, I just want to the audience to know that we did a, uh, a very interesting uh, uh, session with um, uh, Chris Showalter from EFI yesterday talking about color management and also how that can be used in ink savings and things like that. So I think that maybe that is worth taking a, a look at that session again. The replays are available on, on Inkish News right now and will be edited so easier accessible during the week. Uh, just so a, a short info. <laughs> No good. Was was he uh, was he playing for an, uh, a standard in uh, Flexo? No. Actually, it was uh, quite interesting because, uh, um, uh, as everybody knows, EFI is also very keen on on developing uh, the software. And, and and you know, the questions you always have is how device dependent is, is it? And and since you're using uh, the 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 sample print heads on, on on your machines in and you and that was what I wanted to ask you before because one thing I can't remember that you actually mentioned is that you have a patent on a cluster technology using uh, i mean how you cluster the 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 print heads together to to have uh, better quality and faster turnaround time right faster speed right yeah, but 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 then you need the rest of the day if you want me to start talking about the cluster, <laughs> and, uh, because but I can were, keep you, talking but hours you, but about you, it. But you finished sooner than you were supposed to. So yeah, I don't have that's true. <laughs> no, but and, and that that was also not uh, not my purpose because I I think also the Inkish platform I I think it gives also all an, an unique uh, opportunity to to talk about uh, digital printing. At the end of the day, uh, we all as suppliers we all need to make sure that that we attract the customers my uh, our way. So I. I think that a digital technology, like you said, and Samba print that together with a cluster, it, it is crucial. But I think you have to also uh, look at, at more things than just that. You know, it's the company you want to do business with it. What is the future prospect? You know, uh, what is it two years uh, from now? So, so yeah, having a cluster technology, and, and of course, I believe in it uh, because it can not only handle UV ink, but also water-based ink or whatever ink that comes into the future with the with the highest quality in ink yet uh, at today. So, yes, we are in a good position. Um, and also there, uh, you see the big advantage of color stability, color reproduction, and so on. So, uh, mm. yeah, you know, like I said, I could talk hours about this. Uh, mm, I know, I know you could. Yeah. And I saw one of your customer mentioned um, having uh, hired a new salesperson, because obviously it's, again, different mentality and, you know, trying to solve, let's call it inkjet um, versus traditional flexo. So um, he hired a different salesperson. What about operator? Is that a total different skill set or are guys moving across? Is that the intention? No, I think I, I think uh, I think if you look at the technologies out there, uh, let's say Tone or uh, Flexo, um, they're quite similar of uh, skill set. Uh, you have a lot of uh, changing parts uh, mm -hmm. every day, uh, things that you need to change, uh, things that you need to adjust, daily color adjustments, stuff like that. And then if you go to inkjet, that is all gone. You know, you, you have the inkjet hat. Uh, you don't need to do color adjustments. You do profiling of one machine once a day, so it changes the the game uh, again. Uh, and but this. This evolution. So, uh, where you uh, where you saw that uh, ten years ago everybody was happy with the, the current solutions. For me now, it's really difficult to understand why somebody needs a two week training and uh, spent uh, one hour in the morning to get his machine ready. So, uh, it, times are changing. So, of course, uh, it's cutting out processes and sadly processes in a lot of times as people. So, it's quicker time to market and yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> and, and, and again, you know, most of our customers struggling uh, finding the right people. Huh? It, it's really difficult to find uh, people that are enthusiastic about labels like we are, uh, and uh, the seventy-five people in this group. Uh, but it, but it, it's uh, it, it is tough, and our customers see this as well. And if you have a technology that uh, addresses this as well, it yeah, it makes it easier to find people. Of course, Uwe, Uwe Alexander is uh, asking about uh, inks and food compliance. Yeah, that, that, that's that's always a, a really great question that I directly send to my colleague. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, 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 it's 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 you know food compliance. Uh, it's first of all, it's per country uh, different, it's per region different. Uh, it, it also always depends on, on on the usage of uh, the the product itself. Yeah, you know, so if there is any chance, then a UV ink will be in contact with food uh, without being a, g a glass and plastic or something solid between. There, it, it is a no go. Let, let's be honest about that. But so are many other uh, inks as well. So um, I think the, the right statement that you can only make in these kind of cases, everything needs to be tested. Some things we know it cannot work. So in UV uh, label uh, directly on food, for me it's a no go. You know, it, mm. it, it, it's no go. But so so is other technology. Is, now, that, with the reason, based, is that the reason why you're investing also in, in making it a, a WB based a machine with a water based technology? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's move ahead because we are a little short on time now because the conversation goes. So, uh, uh, Gil Hirme uh, I think he's from Brazil. Uh, he has, he's asking, I think that your colleague Marta has already answered a little bit, but to the audience, uh, can you talk a little bit about white ink and its opacity because of these printing speeds? It seems fundamental. That's a good yes. point. So, so currently we are, uh, our opacity of the white is 70%. So I think that's a very high opacity, uh, addressing, uh, the needs of the most customers. Uh, and we do that currently at 45 meters per minute. So, uh, we, we are talking about options in the, in the future to go faster with maybe a little bit uh, lower uh, opacity. So we're looking into things in it. Uh, currently the situation is that we are at 70% uh, opacity, uh, at 45 meters. Ralph uh, Degenhardt is asking, what is the breakdown from ready configured machines and to what extent do the customers want special configurations? So I think this is a question about the Master M5, the all-in-one. Yeah, I thought I, so too, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, of all the machines that we made, not one is the same. Okay. Oh, wow. So, okay. Mm. No, That's no. Good. So... So I, I, I don't think we made really uh, amazing complicated machines. The most had one flexor before and then one flexor or two flexor after. But some customers want foil, uh, some our camera inspection, the IQ 500 that does this. Some customers have their own solution. Uh, then you have a customer that wants two uh, flexor stations uh, or foiling before. Uh, and, and that's all what we do, uh, uh, you know, in our pre-sales cycle. Well, I guess it all depends, as you say, with the pre-sale cycle. And then once the customer starts growing his volume and he starts going into new markets, um, you know, you can always add on. So I think the flexibility of that is amazing. Yeah, yeah, and 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 you always, as an, a salesperson, you always think that you know uh, what a customer wants, but you know. <laughs> Even sometimes the customer doesn't know what he wants, you know, and, and maybe what he wants today is not valid anymore in five months from now uh, when a uh, customer calls him. Uh, you know, I have uh, this tender uh, of 10,000 uh, linear meters of, of something. So um, I, I, and that's why it's also an, uh, something nice that we do. It, it's, it's a journey together with the customer. You know, where do you want to go? Where are you now? And what are the things that you cannot do and you want to do? You know, and, and that's the basic questions that we try to uh, answer. Correct. I love your well, strategy and what you put together, the seven steps, everything. Fantastic. Well done. Let's, uh, th Eric, a wonderful presentation. Thank you very much for your Thank time you. here on uh, Learn With Us uh, Inkjet. Uh, for the audience, the next session we have is with um, um, uh, Matt Burton and Gerd van Damme from uh, from AGB. I say always ATB, APG, and from uh, CERM and um, uh, it's uh, it's quite interesting because uh, <laughs> in, in, when we were preparing the session, uh, uh, the the two gentlemen spoke about that everybody can buy a Ferrari, which I doubt actually, but uh, most people could probably, if they sell everything they have, buy a Ferrari. That's another thing. But uh, what they were referring to was basically that the fact is that if you are a 
ordinary driver, there is a difference from being an ordinary driver to be Mike Schumacher. So uh, I think that what uh, Gert uh, and I will have a session about is how much the MIS system actually influences the value of your hardware uh, um, investment. So I think it will be a wonderful session. And before I just, uh, I just had, you know, I'm the producer and I'm everything here. So there's a lot of things to take care of, but I have sent the link so you can uh, go and, and uh, register and sign in for the next session. And then Eric, thank you for your continued support. Uh, uh, we just got to know each other a couple of months ago, but I think it's been good so far. So uh, I appreciate your support. I appreciate uh, everything that you do. And uh, I think it's great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.